let me tell you the truth as a person and as a ministry I have my reservations my many reservations across the body of Christ there is no denying and there is no hiding but it's too small a reason to practice hate it is too small a reason to demean downplay no I will not do that I have my reservations there are things you will not find practice in koinonia I assure you for as long as I'm alive I, I have read my Bible and I know by the grace of God the things that are scriptural. We have learned from fathers, we have learned from doctrine, we have learned from experience, and we have learned from history. Those who become are those who never settle. They know that there is always a better and greater version. Let me tell you the truth. As a person and as a ministry, I have my reservations my many reservations across the body of Christ there is no denying and there is no hiding but it's too small a reason to practice hate it is too small a reason to demean downplay no I will not do that I have my reservations there are things you will not find practice in koinonia I assure you for as long as I'm alive I, I have read my Bible and I know by the grace of God the things that are scriptural. We have learned from fathers, we have learned from doctrine, we have learned from experience, and we have learned from history. It is sufficient enough to guide us and give us a worthy compass into an excelling ministry. However, I still do not have the right to point to another man's work and call him Beelzebub. That is not given to you. I can speak for myself. I am too young in experience and too young in ministry to sustain the pride and audacity to point fingers at people in the ministry. If ever there is anyone to do it, the fathers have enough credence to speak. If they speak, we will honor. But if they are silent, we should be wise enough to be silent. Are we together now? What the fathers are not doing, dear sons, let us be wise. When we break ranks and jurisdiction, there are consequences in the spirit. Saul lost his place because he thought he could be both Saul and Samuel. Leave the priests to do their work. If you are a king, remain in your place of honor and God will bless you there. Listen, correcting the body of Christ, you've heard me say, is an office. Let us be careful just because God is silent by his mercy does not mean he's endorsing our childishness. We must be very careful. Many have tried it. There were people who tried to carry the ark and tried to do a lot of things and they died there. It was a well-intentioned project. And there are many younger ministers, if we are not careful, we are going to bring a curse upon ourselves because of zeal without experience. Let us learn from history. Let us learn from doctrine. Let us learn from the fathers and then learn from the pain of others who have made these mistakes before. It is foolish to make another mistake that has been made before. The Bible says the things that are written aforetime, they are for our learning. Some of you here are ministers of the gospel. Some of you who are watching are ministers of the gospel. When you do not believe a thing, you just pray. Do not be the person pointing hands and insulting people because even Jesus was called Beelzebub. I tell you sincerely by the integrity of scripture, there are many things we do not know. Let let us stay on that which we know and respect the body of Christ. He may not be a man of God, but he's an elder enough, deserving of your respect. Mama may not be called into any ministry, but one prophetic word from her can rewrite the narrative of your destiny. Let me recap one more time and then we find a place to pray. This is the body of Christ. This is not the body of Christ. No matter how efficient this man is, he's only an effective member of the body. Can I tell you, if Koinonia is the only ministry on earth, we will not be at a loss, but I promise you there are many dimensions of God that we will not see. It is the truth. There are many dimensions of God that we will not see. I bring to your memory an example I made earlier on again. Imagine the Bible as the book of Leviticus alone. Imagine the Bible as the Gospels alone with Jesus at the center and Jesus himself was secured to say there are many things you are going to learn beyond that which I am teaching you. It will not be by me, 
but when it comes learn it it is for your overall profiting then comes Paul and you know the history of Paul how could Jesus point to Paul to bring the Pauline epistle a man who was a Pharisee persecuted the church were they no better people that is God for you one of these days we will see drunkards in the body of Christ becoming apostles I hope we will have the stamina to receive them and not say I used to see you I was once Rahab the prostitute but I met Jesus do not judge me by yesterday I was once Cephas but now I am Peter I was Abraham before but right now I am Abraham can I tell you the truth nobody in the body of Christ has been given the authority to accredit and to discredit we do not have that knowledge we are too limited it is pride and even foolishness to venture into that kind of thing the only basis for accreditation or otherwise is scripture and even at that we must do it graciously because there are dimensions if you had seen what God started doing with us years ago we would not look like what we are now unfortunately and sadly when we started people use the lens of their ignorance to write all kinds of propositions but look what God has done today only God knows how many other people are still in the cave of Adulam while we are pushing them it is the hand of God that is moving them forward just because you do not believe in the ministry of women I hope you will not ignore the next the next Catherine Kuhlman that is coming I hope your ego will not push them down Listen very carefully. Reinhard Bonke has died, but where is his mantle? I hope the person who receives his mantle will be accepted within the body. E.W. Kenyon is gone. All these men have gone. But mantles do not leave the earth to the heaven. That means they will come upon the most unusual vessels. You will see politicians that will become preachers. You will see men and women that will carry dimensions of fire. I hope we will appreciate them. Remember my message on redefining revivals. That in the coming revival, it's not only men of God who will be featured. No. Elijah and Daniel and Solomon and Jesus equal the complete Bible. Not Elijah alone. This is my clarion call to the body of Christ. It is time we love Jesus and love his work more than our ego. If Christ tarries one day, this man standing before you will join the cloud of witnesses. It's not a negative confession, you see. If he comes to meet us, glory be to God, we'll be caught up with joy and gallancy. But like Paul, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But the thing is, would it be said when you are gone that you were so what's the word egocentric that you did not allow the program of God go forward I rather let koinonia close and let the program of God continue than to allow my pride to stand in the way of that which God is doing across the globe from Nigeria to South Africa to Ghana to Kenya all across Europe, America, Australia, the Caribbeans, even the places, the Middle East, the places you never imagined that the gospel and the power of God will be there. There is an emergence of men and women who are carrying fire that God is raising. Some of them are in the fivefold ministry. Some of them are in business. Some of them are in leadership. We must embrace all of them. These are the components that make the body of Christ. I remind you again, I stand on behalf of any man of God, including myself, who may have taught you wrongly, maybe innocently so, and I apologize to you on behalf of people who may not have shown you the way more perfectly, but it's time to hide every pride and help the body of Christ for God's sake grow. The world without Kenneth Hagin would have been lopsided. But the world with Kenneth Hagin alone would have been lopsided. The world without E.W. Kenyon would be lopsided. When I say mention them, you call them God's generals with an S. When our dispensation is over and if Christ still tarries, one day when they are talking about us, they will not mention Joshua Selman alone. They will say once upon a, man, a time, a man called Joshua Selman, I pray that your name will be added to that list not as a source of destruction 
there are many things that need to be corrected in the body of Christ and we are praying that God will open the eyes of many who need to make several adjustments God is helping us all but I tell you it is too small a reason nobody has the credential to point fingers at any in the body because from the lens of every man you are perfect in your own eyes it is others who will look at you and say apostle would you want to adjust this and that and that when you fight the program of God his jealousy will take away your lampstand please hear me this is a clarion call to the body of Christ there are many people in the body of Christ today who have not died but their lampstands have been taken do you know why because they became such an interruption to God's program he will honor them for their contribution so far but do not be surprised when you find out that relevant people today suddenly begin to lose relevance regardless the efforts it is because God will not tolerate any man interrupting his program there is a prophet in the wilderness who is now a drunkard he needs somebody to reach him there there is some prostitute somewhere who needs to carry that Deborah banner there is somebody somewhere in the Middle East our ego has interrupted God's program for too long for God's sake body of Christ for God's sake co-laborers can we for once we were able to criticize the fathers it's amazing that many of us especially to my generation of preachers it is easy to point at the fathers and say you did not do this you did not do well now the fathers have been silent God has granted us the grace to come on stage and look how much we are messing up we need to go back and retrace our steps the first step is to repent from our pungency towards the fathers we need to repent intrinsically and repent in their presence if God grants us the grace for our ill speaking of the fathers most of us have not lasted 12 13 20 years these men have been here 57 years 60 years in the gospel with solid integrity that some of us do not come close to how do we insult them who is mentoring us into this derision what kind of pride and attack is leading us into this nonsense there must be repentance the best of us must still be a student history has whipped and punished many people because of pride i pray that our generation will not fall prey to this this is a clarion call from a heart of love and a heart that is sincere towards god as a contribution towards the maturity of the body of christ it is not a call to condemnation it is not a call to pointing fingers but can i tell you whoever listens to this message and makes an honest adjustment you will see the degree to which god will feature you because a season is about to open in the body of christ and i have taught you about seasons that every time seasons are opening there are people who make the list and there are people who do not make the list again you know i am not lying it is my prayer that god will give us longevity of relevance and the, the greatest way to secure longevity of relevance is to not be an interruption to god's program through pride for those who need adjustments in the area of character we pray that God will grant us grace to make the required adjustments and to rise to a higher level of moral excellence as he grants grace. To those who need to humble ourselves and admit that there are just things we do not know, I am praying that God will give us the self-security to admit. And members, as men of God come out to help, do not look down on them. Because sometimes it is members that join the heads of pastors and join the heads of people carrying negative statements from pillar to post. We must repent from some of these things. It is time to be instruments of bonding within the body. We are better together. We are better forever. Are we together? My final statement before we pray. Listen carefully. My final statement before we pray is to all those who look up to our lives for mentorship and for spiritual direction there are two things i want to tell you number one you must never allow the abundance of revelation that is coming to you to produce pride and disrespect nobody who has received from any man has the right to point hands at that man whether you appreciate the man or not 
the fact that they make contributions in your life you owe them your respect eternally and forever this is what the Bible teaches there are fathers of faith today even if they turn and say apostle just an example if a father of faith turns to them and say apostle I don't know this teach me I will teach them on my knees I will not teach them standing I will teach because we have grant, been granted grace but I will do it on my knees to remind them that even though God has granted us revelation you still remain fathers and we honor you as touching what you represent for some of the younger ministers coming please hear me it is not all about anointing it is not even all about character it is about understanding you must know how God's system and God's program works do not find yourself insulting somebody because of his advocacy of prosperity if you are in ignorance and you do not see the relevance of it just keep quiet and allow them serve the people God has called them to do if somebody is involved in deliverance and you do not believe in deliverance you just teach the truth that God has given you but don't go to the extent of tearing down another person and being sarcastic because number one you are wasting your time and number two that state is an attack itself the zenith of transformation is not knowledge the zenith of transformation is love if you claim you have been so transformed don't show me by the revelation that comes from you show me by the depth of love not pretentious love that ends on the stage love genuinely you may have your reservations about the body but that is not enough reason to hate and hear me one more time to the younger ministers that are rising please go back and edit the things we have taught you receive the things that are consistent with scripture and the things that we have taught you that is out of our pride or our insecurities politely edit them while you keep respecting us you don't need to tell us you have edited them your results will show that you have edited them are we together now